Hello and welcome to another Joomla for Beginners video tutorial for version 1.5. Today we're going to discuss the global configuration system management. We're logged in to the back end of our Joomla installation and we're logged on as a super administrator. And We're starting off at our welcome screen. The first thing we're going to do is scroll down and locate that global configuration icon. Of the three tabs, Today's lesson is going to cover the system management file. We're going to scroll down and we're going to begin with the system settings. The system settings uh, include secret words, path to log folders, and several things. The secret word is basically an alphanumeric number uh, that every Joomla installation has. It's used for various security functions throughout the website. The path to your log folder is just that. It's exactly where your log files are stored. The enable web services by default is set to yes. That's because the web services are required to make a lot of the third party components and extensions function properly while under Joomla. And the help server, first time it actually gives us a choice to choose our help server. We we'll probably want to leave the default help.joomla.org. We might want to change that if we had to heavily modify a local version of a help file for our users. And speaking of users, we'll scroll down slightly. Um, if we choose to allow user registration, as the default says, this is simply giving people the ability to self-register themselves. The new registration type is going to be the default user group that a new user is automatically assigned to once they're approved. The new user activation controls whether or not the new user is emailed a link to activate their account and then the front end user parameters gives permission for the user to edit some of their own preferences such as the default language if you have a multi-language website and perhaps their choice of editors and their help server preferences as well. We're going to go down to the media settings. The media settings will control everything from the front end but not so much from the back end. As an administrator you still retain complete control of what you upload and where you put it. On the front end, we administrators have to take things a little more seriously and make sure that our users are uploading files into places that we know where they're going. So we go through a series of these settings and that's what we use to guarantee that this is occurring properly. The legal file type extensions are simply those file types that you'll allow your users to upload. You'll see there's various types of comma separated values, documents, image files, PowerPoint presentations. You can put whatever you'd like in here. The maximum default size is currently set to 10 megabytes. That's pretty big for most things. Path to the file folder, uh, not the image file folder, but just the path to the file folder for all other media files, in this case, is set to the default of images. And the path to the image folder, which is images only, is set to images and stories. Obviously, you can set this to your own uh, needs for your for your particular website. If you choose to use the restrict upload setting, it's valid only for user access lower than a manager. And then checking the MIME types are just simply checking for those file type extensions that we've already entered in the top field up at the up here and and uh, the legal extensions. And then we have the legal image extensions and the main four image types we've listed right here. These are here by default. You can also protect your website by, uh, by making it ignore particular extensions. You might want to put a TXT in here, for example. Then we have the legal MIME types. They're simply identifying the legal file extensions above. And then we have the illegal MIME types. Again, it's another place you might can protect yourself by limiting the type of file that can be uploaded. We're going to scroll over to the right and then go back up to the top. We're going to start with the debug settings. The debug settings are a couple of settings that simply give us a way to help identify any errors that our website might be producing. If we enable the debug system, and, uh, and we'll see our SQL errors on the, on the top of our screen. If we want to troubleshoot our language file, we can also enable that to be debugged, but don't forget, unless you enable the debug system above it, you're not actually going to be able to troubleshoot your language problem. 
and now we also can control our cache settings. The, the cache handler basically allows for the selection of the method for the tracking of the cache. The cache function in general might improve the user's access speed to the site. If we set it to yes, what it's going to do, it's going to store a temporary snapshot of the database directly within the web server. And then it's going to choose to, uh, it doesn't have to go back to the database every single time. It goes back to that temporary query. And then we can also choose how often we'd like for that cache file to be refreshed. We have it set for 15 minutes, which is the default. You might choose something up to 12 hours if you're so inclined. And the last thing on our setting here is regarding the sessions. The session lifetime is the amount of time before an inactive user is automatically logged out of the system. And uh, we have it set the 15 minute default setting. And the session handler is basically the method that Joomla uses to identify the user's session. And it's currently set to database and that's the default we're planning to leave it at. So we're gonna save our settings and that brings us right back to our welcome page and it tells us that our global configuration details have been updated.